Why can't all these add-ons be part of Blender as built-in features instead of independent projects? A lot of people ask this in the comments sections and the answer is simple. Just take a look at Blender's new render engine, EV Next. It was expected to be launched in Blender 2.4, then it was pushed to 4.1 and now 4.1 is here and it's not here yet. It has been again pushed to later releases. Adding new features to Blender is hard. Adding new features that are to Blender's quality standards is even harder. But we as artists want new features, want amazing tools. We don't care if they were from the Blender development team or from us. We just want our software to work and work better. So demand creates supply. That's why we get these amazing add-ons that are not part of the Blender development team, but just from the community. Like Stamp It, which simplifies the process of applying decals and PNGs to models. It utilizes a controller MT technique that adds the deco without adding a single extra vertex to your project. You're not just adding a plane with a shrink wrap texture. It's basically like how decals work in Unreal Engine. The add-on works in both Cycles and Eevee, and you can layer detailed textures onto any object to add things like water damage, moss, graffiti, and more. Almost all VFX shots require motion tracking to add CGI into the footage. While Blender has an inbuilt motion tracking system, it only takes a few minutes of playing with it to realize there are a lot of areas that need improvement. Everything has to be done manually. If there is a lot of movement in your footage, that means a lot of tracking points will be occluded throughout the track. So you will need more, which will be occluded too, and you will have to add more. You also have to check errors manually. Basically what I'm saying is that it's surprisingly a lot of work compared to what other tracking programs can do. So next time when you need to do any motion tracking, think about Flux Track, which is an add-on that does everything automatically from adding points, tracking them, removing bad points and more. It's going to save you a lot of time. We are told that to make renders look perfect, you have to add imperfections like dirt, rust, scratches, grind maps, and so on. That is great for some renders, but not when you are doing clean renders for product presentation and visualization like Apple or Samsung adverts. For that, your materials need to look perfect to show off the advertised product in the best lighting and best form possible. While it may seem easy to make such materials, anyone who has opened up Blender knows it's not as easy as that. That's why a lot of artists are downloading Material Works, which is a library of product visualization materials for professionals. This looks like magic to me. You select missing parts of your mesh and the add-on will fill them in, creating the expected topology and edge loops. All you have to do is draw some lines and let the add-on do the rest. And you can also use it for retopology. Speaking of why we need add-ons, don't expect an add-on like this to ever come into Blender as a feature. What you can expect is a tool like Dynamic Paint, which will give you a general tool that can do a lot of things, but you have to spend a lot of hours to get anything out of it that is ready to render. All it does is simplify how to make racing bots or just bots on water surfaces. It can also generate full water bodies like oceans with detailed depth, detailed waves and wakes. It may not do all the other things Dynamic Paint does, but it gives you ready to render results. Here is another tool that gives you ready to render results, Blender FX. The alternative is using the particle system, but you have to add 30 minutes of work to get things ready to render. If you're using Blend FX, all you have to do is just drag and drop and everything is ready. If you're waiting for a planet generator Blender built-in tool, don't hold your breath. If you want a planet generator right now that is ready to render, waste no time. The physical celestial add-on allows you to build real scale planets with multiple layered atmospheres, procedure rings in real time while having cinematic visuals. Save time and effort with pre-made planet systems that can instantly transform your scene and serve as a point of further customization. There are so many things you need to make renders. You may not need them for each render, but when you do, you have to spend hours making them. Like a spaceship, vegetation, vines, fire, smoke, stairs, spider web, fluids, crystals, cables, cars, chains, rocks, ruins, and a lot more. What if you didn't have to make them from scratch? This library has 50 drag and drop generators for things you need in a lot of projects. When you are new to 3D, no one will tell you how often you need water in your renders. 
It's a cheat code. If you don't have time to add a lot of detail somewhere, just throw in an ocean into your composition. Oceans or water bodies look amazing and can make renders look amazing that would otherwise suck. This is physical open waters. It's amazing at creating oceans that look great from far away and at close-ups. If you need explosions with effects like tornadoes, basically anything that has to do with volumes, you do have a few options. Blender comes with its own smoke simulation system, it's slow and difficult to use but will still give you great results as long as you are willing to spend a few days working on one simulation. There is also Embergen, the best solution for simulating volumetrics, problem is it's a monthly subscription. And then there is True VDB, a collection of over 50 VDB simulations of every kind. The choice is yours. I'm a bit biased, but I would choose True VDB because of its vast library of explosions, smokes, effects, and everything else that I can easily just drag into my viewport and fully ready to use. By the way, if you are interested in learning how to make these effects without add-ons, I have a, a series of tutorials on making this stuff, like uh, making a tornado effect like this, creating fluid simulations, motion tracking, any type of video effects you can think of. If you're wondering what my setup looks like to be able to handle these things, YouTube has opened up a new thing called the YouTube shop and uh, I can tag products that I'm using in my video. For example, the computer setup I'm using. I'm using two monitors, a Samsung monitor and uh, an LG monitor and also have a 3070 Ti graphics card. I'll just tag them in the shop in case you are wondering what I'm using. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.